metamorphic rocks. Let's start out with some pictures of metamorphic rocks because that's the best part of this. Uh, me key thing to metamorphic rocks usually is there's some kind of layering or order to the mineral, some kind of uh, not randomness. You really can see it here with the black minerals that they kind of group together. They're not random, and I'll actually explain why that is in a second. So this is an igneous rock called Nice. It starts with the letter G, Nice. Here we see um, this pattern. I often call it like a zebra stripe. Okay, that is a key thing to... Um, metamorphic rocks. This is different colors. This, uh, sometimes you see them where the colors are all the same. So you also have that too. Uh, this is called, uh, it's called banding, is those different colors. Uh, this is pictures of, maybe you recognize this rock, think about it. But this is slate, and this, you don't see the different colors, but there are layers in there. It is a little hard to uh, show the layers, but this is some red slate. This looks to be a little purplish slate, maybe a bluish. The colors don't come through, but uh, it's, and slate has these, uh, these layers of the minerals all kind of in the same direction, which we'll talk about. Um, so, if you have these notes and you're doing them, please copy them now. Pause this, whoever's run, running it. Okay, so, metamorphic rocks form, it has to be a rock that exists, and then that rock gets changed. That's what the word metamorphism means. So, usually it happens uh, due to, it's usually heat involved. Okay, and usually heat and pressure go together. So if you, there is a rock, and or a whole bunch, the whole area of rock, and ends up being buried under five miles, six miles, seven, eight, nine, ten, fifteen miles of rock on top. Imagine that's an unbelievable amount of pressure on the rock. It's going to uh, create a, a tremendous amount of heat. So now you have this rock that. Uh, is really hot, and it, the key thing is that it partially melts. Rocks can get so hot in this case if they get buried really deep. They can get so hot that they totally melt and they become magma again, and then that's just leading to an igneous rock once it's totally melted. But this gets partially melted, and um, and then the pressure on this partially melt is gonna is gonna often cause these these this layering or patterns here. Um, when it's buried, when these rocks are buried under a lot of other rocks, it's called regional metamorphism because the whole big region is buried, and that's how it generally works. That's regional metamorphism. Uh, the rock that exists before it gets metamorphosed, that's called the parent rock, and then that will change and become the metamorphic rock. Uh, heat and pressure causes it to partially melt. The key thing is partially melting. And this rock will get, I have like a very thick toothpaste or peanut butter. Think of like even thick, thick peanut butter or peanut butter you may put in the refrigerator, it gets really thick. It's like, it's, it's a solid, but, you know, it, it, it can it's sort of move, we often call it like plastic sort of motion, uh, plastic sort of movement. When we say plastic motion, we like sort of like heated plastic. Um, note if it completely melts because it's igneous rock, as I said. And the mineral will align due to pressure. This is called foliation. Um, and this picture here really shows it. Actually, it shows extreme foliation when it's different colors, uh, it's called banding. But here you have this random mineral, the random mineral arrangement, let's say an igneous rock. And then you have a case where you have a lot of pressure. It's kind of, it's, it's hot and sort of this uh, thick peanut butter type consistency. And the pressure goes this way. All these longer minerals are going to line up perpendicular to the pressure. Now this is called banding. This is what explained here is that it, it, if it gets really like this peanut butter consistency, what happens is the minerals tend to migrate and move. So similar minerals will go together. So like you'll have the, the micas go with the micas and the quartz will go with the quartz and they kind of group together, causing this, this different colored layers, which is called banding. Those are called bands. That's a key thing to in these rocks. And when you see that, it really does jump out. Um, and banding is what we're seeing. This rocks, you really see banding here the black minerals really jump out. Here you really can see it as well. Helps that this rock is cut and polished. It really helps you see it. Um, that's key. So, this is what I have here is, this is some picture of slate. Okay, so this is like an outcrop of slate. And slate is a, is a mildly uh, low-level metamorphic rock, but the, and the pressure all pushes like this, so the minerals are kind of flat. They all get these, this layer, and it's called foliation. It breaks off in these thin layers. If you've ever experienced slate, it's often used, uh, sometimes it's used as uh, flooring, tiles, bathroom, uh, different parts of people's houses, uh, patio sometimes. I know my neighbor has a, has a slate patio. It's often used for roofing, especially older houses. It was a great roofing material because it's, it's really durable. Um, for instance, I have this right here. This, if you can see this, this is a roofing slate. 
Now, you probably can't see the foliation on the side. It's a roofing slate and a solid that uh, came off my neighbor's house three houses down. Don't tell them I have it. It's kind of weird. I didn't steal off their house. They were actually tearing the roof off, unfortunately. But uh, after it had been on there for 85 years, it lasted that long. But uh, that's, that's slate. It's, pretty co it's, it's cool. Um, if you have a house with a slate roof, that's cool. They don't put a lot of slate roofs in houses anymore because it's super expensive. But looks cool, really durable. This is in, in that note packet. This is an example of banding here, these different colors. This rock is nice. Uh, the name of the rock is nice, silent G. That is how it's spelled. That's how it, um, and you pronounce it. Okay, so let me describe this a little bit. And here I have the, uh, these are chocolate chips in a bag. Let's say, in this, ex in this case, I go to the store to get some chocolate chips for chocolate chip cookies. Okay, I buy the bag. I am driving home on the way in the Gazdemobile, and I park for a quick stop at the beach. At the beach, there's a gas. I'm at the beach, um, and let's say I leave the um, chocolate chips, chocolate chips, on the dashboard of the car in the sun. Yes, bad idea. Because what's going to happen to the chocolate? It's going to melt. So now, if it totally melts like this, it becomes liquid chocolate. That's not what I'm talking about. That's sort of our igneous rock example. Um, Let's say these are the individual chocolate chips. So this, let's say it's partial melt. Let's say I park my car there for, you know, nine minutes, so they kind of partially melt. Now, they're not going to totally become liquid, like I said, but the edges will sort of become really liquidy, and then they all kind of sort of melt together at the edges, and maybe they'll end up looking kind of like this. Okay? And this is sort of that partial melting example I'm talking about. Now, you're not going to have holes in it or whatever, but you get the sense of it kind of partially melting, not the complete melting. Um, some more slate. So as you can see, sort of the, the, the foliation layers here. It is often hard to get a good picture of slate. This is more nice. You see the banding, the dark sort of zebra stripe looking that is banding. Um, that's a pretty good picture. Here you can see it as well. So this is where metamorphic rocks are looking for some kind of pattern or order to uh, the minerals in it. So you can see it here, how they sort of group together. Um, sometimes, maybe just uh, non-random would be the word. So you see the, this white minerals here and the darker ones here, and it's just not random. And that's really how you can tell these from igneous rocks, because there's always a degree of, uh, there's always some crystals, especially in, a, in this type of rock. You can see the crystals. They are angular and interlocking, but these are uh, not random. Here you really can see, this is, this is a big kind of outcrop on the side of the road, I believe, so you can really see, not random. You see how they're all sort of grouped together, really extreme banding, and then it's folded. Here's pictures of a little grainy, but you really can see it here. In some ways it does this really sort of interesting uh, um, patterns because it becomes these layers and then it gets pushed this way and they kind of get these swirly because it is, you know, it's just partially melted. Uh, it's pretty cool. This is um, marble, okay? So this is a similar example to kind of what I'm talking about with the chocolate chips, how the minerals all kind of melted together. And now this is a non-foliated metamorphic rock. It can be hard to tell. You see the crystals here. This is not one that really jumps out at you. Um, because you can't see, it doesn't have any sort of layering or grouping, so non-foliated. Uh, this is cool. What else do I have for this? This is cool. One of my favorite rocks because it is meta-conglomerate. If you remember from sedimentary rocks, conglomerate, pretty large size pebbles that are rounded, cemented together. Well, if that is the parent rock, and then that gets meta becomes a metamorphic rock, okay? And in this case, the black here is all the cement. In this case, the pressure must have been this way. So the pebbles all got squished, and they're all stretched out like this. So you can get a, maybe you can't see some of them, but you definitely get a sense that the pressure was this way, squishing them this way when they were like this, again, like thick, thick peanut butter consistency. Very cool. I love, I love Meta Conglomerate. Okay, if you have this, please pause it and copy it down. 